Hey guys, Harry here with part two on the uh, on the garden wall from the concrete. So basically today uh, I'm going to be going over a dedicated pick and dip video. Obviously, all my footage uh, that I post with on my uh, other videos is all just uh, basically me setting my camera up for basically a section of the day for about half an hour, forty minutes. And I'm laying just as I would any other day, any other day in the week, any other time of the day. I'm not going fast for the camera, I'm not going slow for the camera, I'm just sort of playing at my natural pace. It's to give you, uh, you guys, the watchers and anyone viewing or anyone trying to learn, pick and dip through watching my videos, uh, a real world example of what someone does from day to day and not just a, uh, a little one minute clip of me doing pick and dip and going really concentrating and really getting it accurate and really trying to do it as fast as possible this is why i try to split up the videos into parts is because you can just see uh the section uh, you know a little snippet of the day but just uh, in real in real world real time and uh you know to a real standard as well not just me smashing the bricks in flying in a you know a, a row of 20 bricks pick and dip and then stopping the camera and then altering them all afterwards. Uh, <laughs> every brick I lay to the line and how it's and it's laid how it's laid. It's left like that. It's not altered after the fact. You know, as you can see, I lay them up. I, I lay up to in over these parts of the video. If you watch them one after another, you'd see me lay, you know, ten coats of bricks on a wall. Say this, say this wall's 30, 30, brick, 30 bricks length. You'd you'd see me lay three hundred bricks straight out through and through. On one little clip of video so I tend to set these uh, set my camera up basically whenever it's a bit quieter so I, it's normally to the end of the day when everyone's sort of stopped uh, you know charging around and everything everyone's sort of settled into their own areas working and uh, obviously when you're doing boundary walls uh, a lot of the time you're next to a walkway so it is quite busy uh, especially if you're on a big site but uh, with things how they are with COVID people obviously try to social distance when they can especially the management so anyway i'm going to go through a few tips when it comes to pick and dip and a few specific uh, tips um i'm actually not going to talk about the boundary wall itself because it's basically me just running in uh, from last video where i'd built the corners and explained that but so if you're wanting to learn pick and dip after just basically if you've been laying traditional for however many years it doesn't really matter if you've been laying traditional for a couple of years as an apprentice or you've been laying for like 40 years as a veteran bricklayer then you want to start off by dropping your trowel size if you're using an 11 or higher so i definitely recommend trying to get over a 10 inch trowel uh it's probably your starting point as soon as you pick up a 10 inch trowel you'll it'll feel basically more intuitive laying bricks uh even traditional than you would using an 11 or a 12. I just find the 11 and 12 inch trials the more the two bit the, the more tailored to foot in blocks and block work in general. I do see the use of using a 10 inch trial on the footings because you are you having such a, an area to spread the mortar. It does seem uh, oh, it does seem sense using at least an 11 inch on the footings. That does seem like a, a smart thing to do. But there's nothing to stop using a 10 either. So. Having a 10 inch trowel, you'll just be able to gauge how much more you want on the trowel for each uh, spread when it comes to the pick and dip. The the spread itself is quite hard to master at, at the beginning. You'll find yourself putting too much mortar on the bricks. And what you'll find also is a little bit of lack of control over your mortar when you first start, start uh, trying to do the pick and dip. You'll definitely drop a few uh, trial falls down the cavity when you're first attempting just popping and dropping as you would say uh, trying to just literally drop and <laughs> the mortar onto the bed you know laying the bricks so what i recommend is you roll you know the mortar on your board as if you were going to lay out a traditional spread um but get used to uh, instead of trying to spread it out as far and as thin as you can and then obviously you would normally put your grooves or your or uh your v's or your flat spread groove in the mortar you want to just try and um limit your your uh 
the trowel the wrist and trowel movement as when you're spreading so just try to do a shorter spread so i'd describe it as doing a shorter spread and then you're basically sliding your brick back and some way say at a 45 degree angle it isn't our natural science as you can see on my videos i just slide the brick back as if i was laying traditional and it forms a mortar joint but you just have to uh, start your slide at a different uh, length in front of your spread so if you're trying to have, have a tighter joint uh, you want to basically slide your brick back almost same as me laying a as a laying a traditional with the joint but then if you want you know a thicker joint you have to start further down the spread and spread and slide your brick back to create more of a joint and it'll become more intuitive the more you do it uh, when i first started doing pick and dip I actually uh, uh practiced on the thermalite briquettes and some concrete commons i find that's one of the easiest things to start picking dipping on uh you can just you know you don't have to make a neat job of the face if you end up smearing mortar all over it's no big deal it's just block work so that's what i recommend if you're gonna be starting first time doing pick and dip and you're not confident about making a good job of the face work this obviously comes with experience as a bricklayer in general so the longer you've been bricklaying the more intuitive you'll find it i know some people pick up new things easier than others i know when i first started bricklaying i wasn't very good at all it took me a good couple of years to even be able to lay somewhat efficiently with a level or a last string line so I, I didn't pick it up naturally i've just been very very conscious uh of <laughs> of my technique for years and years and i've been very very conscious of how i lay my breaks even before i started making youtube videos i used to film myself uh just out of interest to see how i was laying the brick because i always thought why am i not laying as fast as that guy over there or why am i not as quick as so and so on that scaffold and i thought mm, i need to get better so i was always open to things like this uh, but also when you're doing the pick and dip as well when you when you're starting off um you want to get used to uh picking the mortar up differently off your board obviously you'll see me rolling the mortar around a little bit on the board especially when the board gets kind of empty but uh there's been videos i've seen where people say always round your board off i don't tend to do that to be honest i don't round my board off all the time i don't tend to mess around with the mortar a lot i just think get the mortar off the board onto the wall it's the you know this it depends it depends who how you've been taught when you were a bricklayer i know some people like to round the board off but i like to leave a little bit of dry mortar on the outside especially in winter uh, because you always need that for jointing up and if i've got a bit of dry mortar on the outside uh i'm one of these kind of people who I tend to get my mortar a little bit wet wetter than i actually need it because i'm a one-on-one -on -one. I, I sometimes have to set up the boards maybe get set, set up an extra couple of stacks of bricks with my dad and it might be 10 or 15 minutes after getting my tub then until i actually start laying bricks so i a lot of the time i get a lot of the wetter stuff off the top the sloppy stuff especially if you depending on what silos you're using we're using some of the old type tarmac silos with the big cylinder on the front and as anyone knows and site etiquette when it comes to getting a tub out on site you always uh, start the silo with a handle down to give it a nice clean rinse rinse through and then as it starts rinsing through the water you lift the handle up to let the powder go and then you'll get your mortar to whatever consistency and at the end you put the handle down and let it just rinse through a little bit so you get a little bit of water coming out of a little bit of slop coming out the silo towards the end of your tub and that's what you'll find your, your mortar sits in. It sits in a little pool at the bottom and has a little pool at the top. And that's a lot of the time, especially in summer, a way to preserve your mortar uh, and stop it going off as quickly. But also, you'll find when uh, you're, you're uh, starting off in the morning, if your mortar is particularly wet, I recommend not wetting the boards up and just using the sloppy bits of the mortar from the top of the board and putting them on a dry board. I know it will dry, it will take the moisture out of your mortar quicker, but if your mortar's already a bit wet, it, it basically is just one last job you'll do in the morning. So it'll make getting mortar out just a little bit more simple, a little bit less faffing around other than wetting the boards up. And because uh, if you're anything like me, when I wet a board up, I always tend to wet my own leg when I'm wetting it up. So uh, just getting the mortar a bit sloppier, it just, it just takes away one less job to do. So that's another reason why why i rec why i recommend just just picking the mortar straight up off the board 
because a lot of the time I have my motor a little bit sloppier than I want, especially as a one-on-one. -on -one, I'm not getting through it as quick as two brick layers. So I might wait, lay one course. It might be quite sloppy, but then I'll get to the end and I'll just be digging down for the drier stuff and I'll be digging down. And uh, that's another reason I don't sort of always round my board up because I obviously uh, use just normal bits of floorboard as my spot boards. And uh, I don't have any fancy uh, gator boards or plastic plastic spot boards. Uh, I just use uh, standard wood, standard plywood, so or uh, you know MDF. So your mortar does dry out a little bit quicker naturally. But I find when laying anyway, I tend to when the board starts getting low, and I'll either get my dad over to fill the boards up again. I tend to take the excess mortar from the sides, you know, the dry stuff, and put it to the center underneath all the wet stuff and mix it in myself. But uh, you, you're tending, when you're picking and dipping, to faff around less with the mortar, you just, I basically, just basically, just slice a bit out, slice a bit out, and you'll get used to the way you pick the mortar up. It can depend on the type of trial pattern you have, whether it's London brick or Philadelphia pattern. I found, I found personally, it's easy learning pick and dip with a Philadelphia. And I even think it's, it's easier to consistently get your spread right with a pick and with a Philadelphia over a uh, London brick um, it's just I find it easier if you're learning pick and dip and you want to get good I recommend using a Philadelphia I know all the youtubers and basically every guy you see on YouTube doing the pick and dips using a London brick and I sometimes think that isn't the most ideal uh, style of trowel especially for motor control if you're not a veteran at using pick and dip. I do understand why the London Brick is is very popular because I've used it myself and it does feel nice, but I don't think it's the ideal pick and dip trowel. Um, I'd say as well that uh, if you're using, uh, you only try and use a more narrow trowel if you're using pick and dip as well. The wide heel trowels, 